Hi, in this video, I'll show you how you can use a bullet journal with OneNote. If you're looking for a way to organize your life and spend your time more intentionally, you might have heard of the bullet journal or the Bujo method. This is a system that combines a planner, a to-do list, a journal, and a habit tracker in one notebook. One of the things that I find appealing about Bujo is that it forces you to regularly review and prioritize your tasks and reevaluate your commitments. Anyone who's ever used a task manager or to-do app knows that your list of tasks can grow very quickly since the app these days make it so easy to add them without giving them much thought. Before you know it, the list becomes unmanageable and you become overwhelmed and desensitized to all the tasks. For me, even when I get reminders for a task, I find myself reflexively hitting snooze or dismissing it. The bullet journal uses a process called a migration where tasks that were not completed in a specific period are reviewed and either moved to the next period, moved to the future log, or discarded altogether if no longer necessary. The system ensures that tasks are not forgotten or left incomplete. And at the same time, the constant pruning ensures that your to-do list doesn't grow out of control. The bullet journal method is traditionally used with an analog paper notebook like this. And in fact, that's the appeal for many people who use the Bujo method as it offers flexibility and customization that's difficult to achieve with digital apps. But some of us prefer a digital solution over a paper one. So in this video, I'll show you how to use OneNote to create your own bullet journal. The bullet journal system typically consists of the following. Index. The index is typically the first page of the bullet journal, and it serves as a table of contents for the entire journal. Users can add entries to the index as they create new collections and pages. Since we're using OneNote, which makes search easy, we will not be creating an index. Future log. The future log is a section where users can record future events, appointments, and tasks that are beyond the current month. This section usually covers a period of six months to a year and can include items that you want to get done but have not been scheduled yet. Monthly log. The monthly log is a section where users can record events, appointments, and tasks for a specific month. This section typically includes a calendar layout as well as space for a task list and notes. The daily log. The daily log is a section where users can record their task events and notes for a specific day. This section typically includes a list of tasks for the day as well as spaces for notes, events, and other information. Collections. Collections are additional sections of the bullet journal that can be used to track specific topics or projects. For example, users might create a collection for a reading list, a habit tracker, or even a project plan. Symbols. Symbols are an important part of the bullet journal system and are used to indicate the status of tasks and events. The system typically uses bullets, circles, and other symbols to indicate whether a task is completed, in progress, or migrated to a future date. Now here are the steps to create a bullet journal in OneNote. So you can create a new notebook dedicated to your bullet journal, or you can use an existing notebook and just create a section. I'm going to choose the latter. So here you see that I have a new section created already. Uh, if you don't have this, just click on the plus sign and it'll create a new section for you. And here you can name the section something like bullet journal or Bujo. So I will type in Bujo. So this is a section that I'll be using to keep my bullet journal. The first page I'll create is the future log. So click on it and rename it. Again, this is where I can plan and keep track of events, tasks, and goals that will happen beyond the current month or even the current year. I do find it helpful to add the current year's calendar uh, though. And an easy way to do this is to create one using an Excel template and copying over the image. So let's go ahead and open Excel. Here, let's open up File, and then More Templates. And you can search for online templates. I'm just going to type in Annual Calendar. And you can choose any one of these as you like. I'm going to choose the Calendar Creator and click Create. And what I'll do here is select the entire calendar, right mouse click, copy. We're going to go back to our OneNote, right mouse click, and paste it as a picture. I can resize this if I like. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to drag one of these corner handles, make it smaller, right mouse click, 
set picture as background so I don't accidentally move it around. I can now delete this container. So I keep this calendar on the left side as a reference, and then I'll list out all of the key events, milestones, goals, tasks, anything that I like on the right hand side. And rather than typing these in, I'll show you an example of one that I've created already. So here it is, feature log. As you can see, I have a few tasks, a couple of notes and events, and I also highlighted them on the calendar using the draw tool. And I just selected a highlighter and then I just color them in so that I can easily see when these key events are happening. But keep in mind that the items that you list here doesn't have to be date specific. It's just something that you want to accomplish within the next six months or a year. You can just list them out here. Now we can create another page for the monthly log. Click on it. Now here we want to create a table with three columns. We want to list the date on the first column, the day of the week in the second column, and the third will leave uh, blank so that we can enter in our events, tasks, and items. Uh, an easy way to do this is to actually do this in Excel. So I'm going to open up Excel. And for April, let's just list out one, two, three to establish a pattern. And I'm going to drag it down all the way down to I think April has 30 days in the month. And then for the second column, I'll put the days of the week. April 1st happens to be on a Saturday. So I'll put Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm going to select them and drag the corner handle so it fills in the series. And let's select three columns. I'll put borders around. Control C to copy, go back to OneNote, Control V to paste, and I can adjust the width of the columns as needed. And again, if I were to show you a completed example, go to example, month April, you can see all of the time bound activities and tasks with deadlines and events are listed in the table. And those tasks and items and notes that are not uh, bound by time are listed to the right. Now for the daily log, you can create a page for each day if you think you'll be capturing a lot of notes in them. I don't capture a lot of notes each day, so I use a page for the entire week with each day listed out. I find it easier to scan through my notes this way. So here I'll create a page. I'll nest it in so it falls inside the month of April. And here I'll put April 3rd through the 9th, for example. And then I will list out Monday, April 3rd. And then I'll create somewhere down the line, Tuesday, April 4th, so on and so forth. And as I capture notes, tasks, events, and activities, I would put them underneath. And it does make sense to maybe make these heading a little larger so that you can differentiate them from your actual notes. And again, to show you an example of a page, sample page that I've created, let's go back to examples. Uh, if you go to April 3rd through the 9th, here's an example of some of the notes that I took. When you look at the right side of the note page here, you'll notice that I have a section for migrated tasks. So these are tasks from the prior week. So if I go to the week of March 27th, you'll notice that not all of the tasks that I put down were completed. And because they were not completed at the close of this week, I reviewed what needs to be forwarded over to the following week, what needs to be moved over to the future log, what needs to be discarded, and I made that decision. And the ones that are being migrated over to the following week were moved over to this section. And you know that because you have an arrow indicating that I migrated these tasks. Okay, so uh, and again from here, these tasks again, were then migrated to the following week, the week of April 10th. Uh, so you see that initially they had the check marks. Uh, I did replace them at the close of last week and changed the check mark symbol to an arrow symbol to indicate that they've been migrated to the current week. And this is a system of review that I was talking about earlier. It really serves as a forcing function. 
So it's not so difficult to copy and paste these over, but when you do it over and over again and you notice that there's a pattern of you moving the same set of tasks over to the following, again to the following, again to the following week, um, you'll then decide whether these tasks were really important if you just keep postponing them, right? So at that point, you make a decision to either move them over to the future log or you decide that these are not important and should just be discarded. Now let's pause here for a minute and go over the symbols that I use for the bullet journal. I've modified the official Bujo symbols to better fit my needs and I customize my tags for easy use. Let me quickly walk you through each one. So I'm in the home ribbon and let's go to the tags uh, section. So if I hit this little drop down, you can see control one shortcut is for my to do's. Control two is set up as events. Control three, anything that I want to tag as important, I use control three. Control four are ideas that I want to come back and revisit. Uh, control five are something great that happened and I want to remember, so good memory. And control six is for I want to migrate task activities to the following week. And control seven is for if I want to migrate something to the future log. So these are the seven tags that I use for bullet journal. You don't have to use these and these are not the official uh, Bujo symbols, but I find that they work for my needs. And if you want to learn how to set up custom tags for your own needs, be sure to check out the video in the card above where I walk you through how to set up your own custom tags. Lastly, you can create a page group for collections, then add a page underneath for each collection whether they'd be a list of books you want to read, restaurants to try, or even a habit tracker. So here's an example of a list of books. It doesn't just have to be lists. You can also, after you finish reading a book, you can put your thoughts on them underneath so that you can reference them in the future. And that's it. You've created your own bullet journal with OneNote. You can, of course, experiment with different layouts and symbols to make your bullet journal suit your needs and your preferences. I hope this video was helpful and gave you some ideas on how you can use OneNote as a bullet journal. If you have any questions or feedback, please leave them in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more contents like this. See you in the next video.